cut out the middleman so that they can form cooperatives like this one, where producers and consumers are, are trading directly um, and they're trading locally. Uh, these bees are figuring out where to distribute all the goods that they've made. And they're making sure to bring these goods to the people who need them the most, not just the people who can pay the most. If we want to undo this pyramid scheme, uh, it's, it's very important that those of us who have some sorts of privilege within it work to try to lend that privilege to those who have less. Here we see a couple of outsider activists who are parachuting in to a, a frontlines community. There's a snowshoe hare that has a graduation cap on, maybe it just graduated from college. It's got uh, some climbing gear and a U-lock because it's about to do some direct action, locked down to some mining equipment. Because it knows that it has the, it has the privilege of being young, not having children yet. Um, maybe it has a community that has, it comes from a community that has enough of a safety net that going to jail for three days actually won't be that big of a deal. Um, and it, it can afford to do this type of thing, so it can lend its privilege to these frontline communities. I also want you to note that it has its obligatory leftist propaganda, which is required for all such kind of action. Yeah. Um, and this painted turtle is, has a, is coming in with its access to technology, its access to media, its access to national networks. It's, uh, it's going to film a documentary or something like that to spread the word about what's happening in these places that um, oftentimes, where, where people's voices are, are going unheard. Very importantly, there's another hair that's already on the ground. It has these air traffic control wands and it's telling them where to land. It knows where they need to land because it's listening with its big ears to this monarch butterfly who's maybe an elder from the community. An elder who's explaining the complicated local politics, explaining the history of struggle, explaining the very real needs that people on the ground have right now. So that these, these critters, they know where to plug in. They know where um, their actions can be most useful. And you know, this, this monarch butterfly might be a little too fragile to do that stuff on its own. But it has this knowledge, it knows better than anyone else about what's, what's happening with these extractive, uh, with these mining and stuff like that. And so, just by the very act of, um, of, of lending our power to those who have less, helping them, giving them space to empower themselves, um, we're, 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 we're taking apart that pyramid scheme bit by bit. Here's a scene of a bunch of animals that are all gathered together to keep military and other forms of violence out of their communities. The colonial paradigm is founded upon violence uh, on many different levels. There's violence in the form of military invasions, but there's also violence all around us. Uh, the police, prisons, uh, there's violence in our communities, there's violence in our homes sometimes. And if we want to undo this colonial paradigm, we need to try to uh, we need to try to, 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 to fight back and defend ourselves from this violence, to stop it at every, at every chance we can get. The last scene I want to show you all is a scene of seven generations of women salamanders who are teaching and learning locally relevant knowledge. There's this new expectant mother who's uh, learning about medicinal herbs from the great grandmother who looks kind of like Jabba the Hutt because how do you draw a really old <laughs> salamander? You put wrinkles on it, right? I don't, I don't. Anyway, sometimes, you know, sometimes we make shit up. Uh, <laughs> there's, uh, there's this adolescent salamander who's learning from its grandmother how to plant bioremediating plants, things like cattails and watercress and water lilies. Other things you may have heard of like collard greens, mustard greens, burdock, sunflowers, dandelions, all of these common plants gradually clean up the soil and the water, removing heavy metals and other toxins, just like those plants did uh, 350 million years ago. And they're gradually cleaning up the water so that this, this new mother can bathe her baby. And this is in here to, just to show, just to honor the, uh, this, this very beautiful, life-giving, respectful, appropriate use of water. And there's this middle-aged 
menopausal age salamander that's weaving a tapestry that connects all of them and flows on into the future. Because it's so important that we have respect for those who came before us and have care for those who will come after. And with every action that we take, with every choice that we make, we need to really think about the consequences of our actions. Not just the immediate, instant gratification, short-term effects, but even the, the long-range effects that will last you know, seven generations on into the future. So 